The aim of this video is to give you an overview of all main variations that we look at in the course of this DVD. This is our basic position in the Neidorf, of course, and as I have explained, we are actually trying to treat the Neidorf in the most classical way possible. That is, we are playing e5 whenever it is possible. This comprises several lines which are rather old or classical, but also some modern treatment by either white or black in some lines. And we're going to look at this and actually you will see in the course of these variations that some points or some moments are highlighted with a, with a blue mark. This is the point where we are dealing basically with a modern treatment by white. The rest is more classical, uh, it has been more established since decades. And uh, well, just this to, to show you more or less how we are parting with the, with the work here. Let's start with that bishop e2 move, the most classical move, which usually leads to rather quiet positions when we can play e5. One of the modern ways to treat this line is knight f3, a move which would not have been seen 20, 30 years ago, but which has become quite popular in the past few years. Actually, we are going to um, describe a plan which is very similar to other lines where you have the blue spot as well there. White actually tries to establish firm control of this square d5 by developing the bishop to g5 and most often chopping it off against the knight f6, which is a defender of that square d5. Of course, the more classical way here for, for white is to go knight b3. It's still more frequently seen nowadays than knight f3. And we go on with bishop e7. And here comes another modern treatment, which implicates the, let's say, delay of short castle by white with the benefit for the benefit of bishop e3. To sum things up, actually, we play bishop e6 with black only when we see bishop e3. Otherwise, we wait a little more. We might play it also if white cannot play f4. But here, after bishop e3, bishop e6. If white plays f4, that means he's wasted a tempo when we take on f4. He has to take back with the bishop and he has wasted a tempo. In this position, after bishop e6, White's main plan, modern way to, to play this position is here again to try and occupy this square as early as possible. He can even do it immediately, knight to d5, when we have to be careful of that threat here. Now knight bd7 and usually a move like queen d3, when normally we take here and this is the start of a rather modern line where uh, black has his own chances. Now, coming back and leaving aside perhaps the modern treatment of bishop e2, we have the main move castle, castle. And here again, we are going to wait a little more with the bishop c8 until f4 is not too dangerous anymore. Uh, not that it is really killing, but uh, we prefer to, to wait before we develop the bishop. And from here on, several plans are possible for white. Uh, some of them linked to the attempt to control d5 here again, or others perhaps a bit more aggressive where he tries to play f4 nevertheless. And uh, well, I think everything is summed up pretty well in the uh, video uh, devoted to that classical bishop e2. Now, let's move um, to bishop e3 immediately, which... Um, can be the start of the English attack, but not obligatorily, because after e5, white can also go back to f3, which is in itself quite uh, an old move. Bishop e7, bishop c4, and we can see it's, it 
it's come back into fashion for white because we are dealing with that same plan as before in just a slightly different version with the development of white pieces. But it, we are here talking about the control of square d5. White doesn't want to attack the black king in any ways. He just want, wants to play it positionally. Here we recommend castling, castling and queen c7 hitting the bishop and on the next move developing the bishop to e6, trying to contest the control of this square here on d5. Of course, knight b3 is possible as well. It, I would even call it the main move because after bishop e6, f3 is the start of the English attack. This is a huge chapter where black has different ways to react. On this DVD, we recommend h5, which is also quite fashionable nowadays with, uh, amongst others, Vashila Grav playing it regularly in the past few years. Black's idea is to stop the English attack immediately. There is no g4 coming. Of course, h5 also has some small drawbacks. And here, white can actually choose between two, well, two directions in a way. Usually the move is queen d2, knight bd7, and now he chooses between an immediate or very early knight d5, which leads to some exchanges. We have already seen this type of exchange in the classical variation, bishop e2. So bishop takes d5, e takes d5, and we can now try to develop the bishop here on g7. Uh, we always try to exchange those black squared bishops here. It's not yet easy to achieve. And white can here choose between short castling, preparing short castling or long castling. This, of course, leaves some doors open. After knight bd7, knight d5 is the first direction. The other plan for white is to play, to play it a bit more quietly with bishop e2, castling on short side. When it it's not obvious that he will manage to play knight d5 later on. Now, we manage to play e5 and we get to play e5 against several other sixth move by white. For instance, g3, which is an old line which has, has uh, seen um, more or less popularity with the course of time and in in the past few years it's it's regained some popularity uh, here we go e5 knight to e2 it can also go back to b3 a line we cover as well here after knight d e2 black is going to play knight bd7 he can also start with bishop e7 he's going to try and play b5 a move that white can stop by a4 immediately or later if he wants, then we play b6, try de developing the, the bishop in fianchetto. One of the main plans for white here, let's admit bishop g2, I'm going to play b5, is to go h3 and then g4, knight to g3, and he's going to establish some kind of grip on the white squares. All this is covered here as well, and this line is actually quite interesting. H3, that's also something which uh, is quite fashionable. It's been fashionable in the past decade. We play E5 as well, and several retreats for the knight now, which can go to F3. Again, a modern treatment, exactly the same ideas which I have explained Whenever the knight goes back to f3, we're going to try bishop c4, bishop g5, and controlling that square on d5. The verdict is not final, but basically the ev evaluation says black is definitely okay here. It's too quiet a continuation to cause problems in theory. The retreat of the knight can also be done to b3 when we play bishop e6, or after the main move, knight d e2. Here again, actually white would like to get a version of the g3 variation, one tempo up, which means g4 in one go. This is not something we allow, we play h5, which has the drawback 
to um, weaken a little bit that square on g5. And with bishop g5, he, white actually wants to exchange here and get control of that square d5. Here again, we are dealing with that positional plan, which has become quite modern. It's, it's actually in the realm of those modern treatments by white. F4, that's an old line, and I have to say it's one of those variations which are not too popular anymore by white, but it could uh, come back one day. Here we recommend as well e5, knight f3, knight bd7, continuing with b5 if given the chance. Usually white plays a4. First we play bishop e7. Castle one day soon, we're going to probably take on f4 and establish some control over the dark squares. Finally, there are two main lines. I'm not looking at secondary alternatives by white in this moment. I'm just dealing with main lines. Two main moves for white where we don't, when we cannot really play e5. Those are bishop c4. Now, if you play e5, this bishop is just ideally placed. We do not want to give him this. So e6, bishop b3 is the main move, preventive measure, b5. And here, well, we can follow up with castling bishop e7. Two basic plans for white. The first is to try an immediate attack with f4 and then either f5 or e5. Actually, f4, f5, he can even do before castling. Thus trying to force a decision by the pawn e6, which we usually gonna, are going to push on e5 whenever f5 comes. And then while well, black organizes counterplay sufficiently quickly against e4, in general, this is considered a slightly premature attack by white. The other plan is more restrained. That's queen f3 here, uh, threatening e5, which we normally um, face with queen c7. And we're going to castle short and eventually manage to develop the pieces. And finally, I've kept perhaps not the best for last, but the most fascinating and perhaps most complicated line against the knight of that's bishop g5 it can you know give rise to hair, hair rising complications here again e5 not recommended the bishop had developed itself to uh, tease our knight so e5 not really recommended e6 f4 Knight bd7, queen f3, and queen c7. That's the line we recommend on this DVD. I'd name it the Gelfand line because it's not his line. He's not invented it. It's been played before he was even born. But uh, he is the main advocate nowadays of this line with black. Black will not develop the bishop too soon to e7, which would be another line, by the way. But he's going to play b5. Bishop b7 quite quickly, perhaps sometimes trying to play b4, although one has to take into account always knight d5. Even if not forced, the knight can come and sacrifice itself to d5. White castle short, and he has different ways to develop, all of them being covered on this DVD. I think I have um, covered most of the main lines here with a uh, short overview as short as possible um so well i i think we we are done with that and uh, i hope you have enjoyed that